If you have attitude, skills, and plan against a rifle-wielding attacker even, you can win the fight with a pistol. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of South Carolina. Shows us one of the crazier incidents that I've ever seen as a man comes in and looks at an AR-15 in a pawn shop, turns into a crazy gunfight that teaches us some important lessons about how fast fights develop, about the importance of marksmanship, and about using concealment effectively in a gunfight. Boy, there's a lot going on in this one. I've sped up the beginning here. We see this guy's come into this pawn shop, said he wants to see an AR-15, and so the employees just, you know, grab one off the shelf to show him inspecting it like you would normally expect a customer to do. And now, as we slow back down, we see the guy put his hand behind his waist here, and he is going to pull a loaded magazine out from behind his waist and put it in the rifle. Now, he almost chambers it there, but he doesn't run uh, the charging handle, and the employee's trying to talk to him. Now, I've sped it back up again because they talked for some time. Now, if you go read the news story on this one, this guy said that, you know, the Russians had been talking to him about 9-11, clearly mentally unstable, has a lot of problems, and now he's going to charge that rifle, and now we know we got a gunfight here. We switch angles, the employee's on the right, you're going to see him get a gun up and in the fight and get a shot off on this guy and chase him off. Now, I wish that it was over at this point, but not quite. You see the employee kind of come back around here, he's still got gun in hand. He's going to go up to the door here in just a second to see what's going on. See, the female employee, she comes up. She has a gun in hand as well. It's hard to see there in the beginning, but we'll see it in her hand in just a minute. And when he decides, the employee does here, hey, man, I, uh, you know, it's time for me to lock the door or whatever, as the other employee is going towards the back. So he starts to try to lock the door. We're going to see that the perp is still in the danger zone here because watch now as the employee tries to lock the door. Then we're going to see a couple of shots come through the front window right there, and now the employee is going to run off. Thankfully, no one was hurt there. And let's see it from the other angle. Top left now, you can see the shots go through the glass very high. And we actually have a third angle of it here from the front. You can see it's in the right side now. You're going to see that that glass is broken very high, actually above the door level. Now, let's go back and learn some lessons on this one. And that first one is just, you know, these things come out of the blue sometimes, friends. You know, this guy's at a pawn shop. Guy asked to see an AR-15. Of course, they're going to give him, you know, and let him see that or whatever. Now, you might have said, well, he could take the bolt out or whatever. But, the hang, you know, I, I look at guns all the time in gun stores, and this is just what we do. But now this guy starts acting funky. And when you start seeing that active weirdness, and he puts a magazine in the rifle, and you see a loaded magazine go into the rifle, and the employee's now pointing a hand at him and saying, don't do that. Now, you got to decide at what point we are talking about a deadly threat here. Guy loads a magazine in the rifle and you say, hey, put that down. You don't put that magazine in the rifle and he does. You can say, hey, wait a minute, things went really south here. But you got to ask from an employee's perspective, mentally unprepared for this, would this have been the time to draw your gun? Well, I mean, his rifle's not chambered yet, so you know you got at least enough time to get your you know, gun up and in the fight. But, you know, they're sitting here and having an argument about it. So now, though, when he chambers that rifle, you got to know that you got to fight on your hands, that it's time to go. You got to get your gun out. Now, I know that we would certainly say we would rather not take a pistol to a rifle fight, that if the bad guy has a rifle, I'd much rather have a rifle and as many friends with a rifle as I can. But that's not always the fight you're going to get. You got to fight with what you got. So you're going to see the employee here on the right hand side. He drops down. And I love that he did that. Now, because, again, concealment works as well as cover in 99% of CCW gunfights. Only thing I might recommend is not to go down and, and stay in the cover right where you're at. You want to move over and pop up in a different place if you possibly can. So one of the things Pat McNamara talks about is, you know, being unpredictable. But he does get his gun up and in the fight. And you can see here that he does pop up and gets his gun up and on target. Now, you got to be able to hit that shot. That's about a 10 to 12, maybe even a 15-yard shot there on a target that could conceivably shoot back at you. So you really need to know how to take those significant shots from a compromised position. Now, thankfully, that ran him off. The shot that the uh, employee took there did not get him. But now you got to ask, what's the appropriate follow-up action? I say it again and again in armed robberies. When the bad guy flees, let him go. Don't chase fleeing bad guys out the front door because bad things happen out there. Counter ambushes happen out there. Instead, hunker down to a position of safety, barricade yourself where you can control access and stuff like that and get yourself into a safe place. Because when you come out here into the outside, you don't have control of that. Now, I also want to talk about this other employee here. And you can see her using her gun to point down at things. And I'm not telling you that she pointed the gun at the employee in the green shirt here. But certainly, teaching your employees, if everybody is going to be armed, teaching them safe firearms handling, effective firearms use is important. That kind of pointing with a gun like that is not effective and not helpful when she's just using it as a pointing tool. 
put the gun back in the holster when the threat has passed so that you've got both hands free to do the things you need to do. Now, of course, as the employee here is going to lock the door, he stays in the danger zone, and because he does stay in the danger zone, we had some shots ring out from the rifle that was stolen from the store. Now, thankfully, uh, because of a bunch of 911 calls, the police were able to go and get this guy pretty quickly afterwards, took him into custody, and he's telling him all his weird conspiracy theories and whatever. But from a self-defender's perspective, that's why I tell you to stay away from the door. And again, thankfully, because the parking lot was fairly full, this guy just shot back kind of randomly into the store. But if he had had a beat on these guys, then those shots could have clearly and easily been deadly. So know when it's time to pull your gun, know how to use cover and concealment effectively, know how to put shots on target from compromised positions at more than those three to seven yard distances, and know how to take appropriate follow-up actions to cover your ASP.